Hello, welcome to Mzansi Oz Diary. My name is Connie. If you're new here, you're very much welcome. Yeah, let's talk about this uh, developing story uh, that has sparked a conversation across South Africa and across the globe. It's a very sensitive issue. It's about the death of the children. And that's why I'm talking about it because I'm very concerned of the lack of actions from the officials about this issue. So we're going to dive deep and listen to the officials who has been questioned about these deaths. And there is some conflicting uh, reports from his side and the families. So the reports that we know of, the toxicology report of the last three kids that have died last year, is that they died from organic phosph organophosphate poisoning. But he is disputing that. We're going to listen to him and I will come back and comment on his this clip. So let's listen in to this the conversation. And, and let's go directly to Peter Manganye, the Environmental Health Director in the city of Johannesburg. Mr. Manganye, uh, two quick questions and before we close the show. Number one, what then was ultimately the cause of death for the children who died in Naledi last year which is the same vicinity where these five children have sadly died this time around. Uh, so, so thank you very much. I think, uh, can you repeat the question? Uh, the question simply is this. The children who died last year, you said you could not find this organophosphate, which was suspected to be the poison. So. What was the cause of death of those two children? I think it was. I think this is what I've, uh, this is what I've said. Uh, uh, I said the post-mortem results confirmed that the cause of death was organophosphate poisoning. Organophosphate is a it, it, it's a banned chemical that was used highly in agriculture as a pesticide. Um, the street name for that uh, chemical, um, or the name that is commonly, um, the, 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 the chemical is known by, it's halipirimi. You know, what I've said is that it was not found by the forensics examination or analysis of the samples of the alleged, you know, uh, um, source, uh, food source that uh, um, at that point in time was alleged to be um, the suspected cause of, uh, of uh, the death of the children. Yeah. So first of all, um, the organophosphate and halipirim. Halipirim is aldicap. That's a name that we will call it. So it's not it's halipirim, but in chemist, it's aldicap. It belongs to a group of compound that we call carbamate. So it's not an organophosphate. First of all, just to clarify that, that all the carb, halipurim, it's not organophosphate. Yes, both organophosphate and halipurim, otherwise known as belonging to the group of compounds that we call them carbamate, they are pesticides and they are not used anymore and they're banned in most countries, including South Africa. So let's continue to listen to this man. Yeah. So in terms of uh, the food samples that we took to, to the laboratory, there were no traces or there was no, um, you know, uh, the, the laboratory did not find any contamination of the biscuits by halipirin. Okay. Now, the question is, what could, where could the children have come into contact with uh, uh, that particular Exactly. Uh, uh, substance. Yes. Yes. And you couldn't find that source. We couldn't find it in the in the in the food that we uh, took to the lab for analysis, but uh, the post mortem confirmed that indeed they did, you know, uh, consume, uh, you know, something that is contaminated with organophosphate. Okay. But it was not the food that uh, we were made to believe at that point in time okay um, which led to us taking the samples to forensic laboratory for analysis 
He's making assumption that the sample that he got from that puzzle shops must have the carbamate, must have the organophosphate that would have killed these kids. He's confused. Anyway, confused both carbamate and organophosphate, but let's agree whatever he thinks carbamate and, and organophosphate are the same thing. That's his language. He chose to use that. He's meant to be an expert. He showed, but I'm, I'm saying too, that's not, that's false. 100% false. They're all different. They're pesticides, yes, but they're quite different. Even in chemistry, when you look at the structure, they're quite different. But they also work on the nervous system uh, the organophosphate is irreversibly inhibit cholinesterase enzyme, while the other one, the carbamate, will reversibly inhibit cholinesterase enzyme. So the symptoms of both of the the carbamate slightly less of that of the organophosphate, because organophosphate they form this permanent bond, and the timing of this bond that are getting formed is very crucial. That's the one that determines the survival. The cover may do form these bonds, but they are temporary. They're not full um permanent bondage, but they both are dangerous. And children are have the smallest body surface area, so they're highly at risk of any little bit of toxicology in their blood. So let's not underestimate this. Both compounds are banned anyway in most countries, okay? So I am just sitting here stunned by his analysis that the very fact that he went to the very same shop and took that sample, that sample must have the organophosphate poisoning. He clearly doesn't understand this. He clearly does not understand this and i'll explain why he's very much he's making a lot of assumption and one of the assumptions he's making is that this compound should be found in there it could have been just the very unlucky biscuits that were contaminated in those the one it could have been that batch because these illegal migrant shops, they sell product with no batch number. Even yesterday, I was listening to a program that was showing that they don't even have the expiry date or even the batch number. If you don't have the batch number, how are you going to look for it? If this compound, this uh, product, sorry, this product came from the black market. If you don't have a batch number, you have no way of finding out this product. It, I mean, because the batch number will tell you are you looking at the same product that were manufactured on the same day by the same person at the same location, same condition? That's why the batch number is crucial in any product. So now he's saying that here he went to the store and pick up pr products, biscuits that don't have expiry day, don't have a batch number. He said out of that result, or oh, he can... He's put the medical examiner that mm, they didn't die of the organophosphate poisoning. They died of something else. My goodness, South Africans, why do you deserve this? I don't understand what you guys have done. Why you deserve these people? These people had a big problem. The problem in South Africa is the leadership. It is not this problem. Because these illegal migrants would have been gone. With strong leadership, you don't have this problem of illegal migrants running rampant. You know, holding guns, threatening police officers with the or machete and all of that stuff, lawlessness they're engaging in. You wouldn't have this problem if you had strong leadership. I feel sorry for all of you South Africans at home, especially those in the low income areas that don't have any protection. I sit here in my home in Australia feeling a pain that you're feeling. Because this is a big problem is this leadership. Here, just listening to him now, it's like, oh, yeah, what are you talking about? It is horrendous. Anyway, let's listen to him go, you know, continue to expose himself, okay? Have your investigations in the past revealed at any point that some of the spaza shops manufacture their own products? Very quickly. Uh, spaza shops that we've been to, and I haven't been to all of them, are outlets, they are, they, are, they are sales points of products that they source elsewhere. So there could be a manufacturer either located in the city of Joburg or even in outside of the borders of the city of Johannesburg from where they buy um, 
the goods that they offer for sale. But spaza shops are in the main, you know, outlets of, um, you know, uh, uh, the sale or sales point of, uh, of various uh, type of commodities and products okay. that are offered there to communities. You know. You know, I wish that the reporter would actually question him a little bit further just to find out if he's, he actually did visit the manufacturer, if he was able to trace the manufacturer, because this is an incomplete investigation. That's why we have more kids that are getting poisoned with this organophosphate. Because, yes, he didn't find anything. Let's believe him. That's true. He didn't find anything. But has he visited the manufacturer? Does he even know the manufacturer? Because it's alleged that they don't even have expiry date. They don't even have the batch number. Because if you don't have the batch number, even if you have a manufacturer, you need a batch number. The reason why you have the batch number, you need a patch number, is because you can trace it to the date, the time, the condition of manufacture, and the batch sample. And when you look for a product that was manufactured at that time during that process, you look, you check those sample. You don't check any other biscuit, similar biscuit. You check for that batch that was manufactured on that day at that time under those conditions and and check all of them. And then if not, you're going to look at the environment of where they were manufactured, if there are any traces of that. So he, he hasn't clarified that. I'm assuming he did not go there because that's why there's still more kids being poisoned in South Africa because he has not done his job. The problem, as I said to you guys, South Africans, my family and friends, your problem is leadership. The problem is competency, leadership. That is a big problem. That's why you have all of them running rampant. Okay? They run rampant. All the illegal aliens are everywhere. Because you do not have the leadership. If you had a strong leadership, this would be nipped in the butt quick. Okay? This would be nipped in the butt. Okay? Let's listen in. Mr. Manane, you've heard, you have heard what uh, Mr. Manane has had to say, uh, Mr. Mandanya rather. Does that influence your next course of action, given what we saw today? Or are you going to continue with the same action tomorrow? Well, we are still continuing with the same action of today. Uh, we are not backing off. We are not uh, backing down to say uh, it is not this illegal uh, 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 nationals that are in uh, uh, these different communities. I mean, if you listen to the, the, the DG, he's contradicting himself to say the, the, the forensic report that they received to say uh, these kids, they died from uh, Alpirin, uh, from their own uh, 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 investigation. Uh, it then says, no, no, the, the food they ate, it's, 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 it's not positive. All right. So he's contradicting himself. All right. Uh, unfortunately, I'm completely out of time. Dr. Sibanda, I would have given you the opportunity for a last word, but I do apologize. Uh, I'm completely out of time. So uh, that's the conversation tonight. Uh, the residents seemingly are not going to back down, at least if COSAS is to be believed. And so uh, where does reasonability come into play? Because last year's investigations revealed that the food or the snacks that were purchased at this plaza shop did not contain this organophosphate poison, which was found in the children who sadly passed away at that time. Three undocumented foreign nationals have been arrested during several inspections of spaza shops in the Levy Soweto. Officials from the National Consumer Commission, Joburg Environmental Health, Home Affairs and SAPS carried out the inspections. This followed the deaths of six children that died in a suspected poisoning incident last week of allegedly consuming chips bought from a spaza shop.
and some of the youths they don't even have any proper labeling in terms of ingredient or youth friendly and that's the important that's in in which is in uh in which I have uh proper labeling of things. So that's what we actually believe. I don't know, as you've heard um, in this video that, yeah, they sell a lot of expired goods and they don't have any labeling. They don't have, you can't, you don't know what ingredients they put in, in their product that they sell. They, they, three of them were arrested because they're illegal migrants. Like I said, all these one, the product they sell, they're from black markets, they counterfeit goods. You know, there is no benefit now for South Africans to have these people in their community. If you're an official listening to me, South Africans don't benefit from these people. May you please take them and return back to where they came from. They've killed six children. Six children have died. The corporate media call it xenophobia. How can you say six, xenophobic when people are angry, when the community is upset with the loss of these children? It's not anger. They're reacting to this. So you, as a as a official, you need to act. You need to act now and try to prevent any catastrophe from both sides, from the angry community and also from protecting them from these illegal migrants. You need to start acting now to stop the catastrophe because this is predictable. It's predictable. They're going to be upset and angry. It's very upsetting to see children die from a preventable stuff of a failure of, of to the highest level this is the failure of these people that you've got in the country of South Africa. We can look, I looked at the data. There's never been an incident before these people came in that you've had kids killed as a result of poisoning, being poisoned by organophosphate that is banned in South Africa. Even the carbamate, pyrithium, is banned in South Africa. Because they can get through the port to the custom. I haven't seen anything from Dr. Leon Schreiber that actually addressed this issue. This stuff is the reason why this GNU, the ANC, did not get fifty percent over fifty percent of the vote. That's why they had to form this GNU Dondoni. Is a result of the vote of South Africans. They're very clear what they want. And it was very clear in the last election. They didn't want these people in their community. These people do not benefit South Africans. In fact, they put South Africans' life at risk. Right now, South Africans' lives in those marginalized communities, in townships, their lives are at risk. Their children's lives are at risk. There's no benefit. There is nothing. Zero benefit. To have these people there. The next election is the local government. The local government, yeah, you South Africans, you haven't registered for, to vote, you got to make sure you register to vote. These officials who do not perform, who do not put South Africa first, they should go. They should follow their own people. These people, they should go. You start, we have to start strengthening the leadership, performance, competency. The South African law, consumer law, is there. You need to enforce it. South Africans aren't asking anything more than you would expect when you go to the city. They expect their kids to be safe. In fact, for people who don't understand South Africa, township is the only place where when you are there you are likely to be like when you're here in australia what i mean by that is that you are free there is no high walls there is no um 
security. You are free. This is the all is the only place in South Africa where people are free. People are not being kept in this high wall prison compound township. It is where the heartbeat of South Africa is. It is where the democracy of South Africa started. So where to? So we don't want these people to go in and destroy the history of South Africa and destroy the culture of South Africa. South Africans want the history and the culture preserved. And the only way to preserve the history and culture to make sure people who are there understand the culture, respect the culture, respect the law, and follow the law of the land. That's it. If you can't do that, they must pack and go. Mabahambe. Mm, mabahambe. Seriously, mabahambe. There's no benefit. There is no benefit having these people there. Nothing. No benefit at all. If you have children who cannot even walk and go to the parcel shop and buy a snack and, and be alive and share it with their friends, then the country is on the wrong path. It's on the wrong path. Because children can do that in township. They can do that because it's free. They're not surrounded by high walls, security, like you would get in other areas when you go to South Africa. So you want the town to turn the township into that kind of nonsense that's happening in the suburb in South Africa. Because that's nonsense, really. The fact that this high wall security is crap. I don't see this here in Australia. I'm free. I have a slip around. My gate is open. Nobody's going to come in into my gate. This is how township people live. So you want to destroy that in the name of what? Pan-Africanism? I don't want to be. If Pan-Africanism means being lawless, I don't want to, I want nothing to do, deal with it. I don't want to be Pan-Africanism. If that is what you call it, a Pan-Africanism, it is this kind of behavior, I want nothing. I do not want to be a Pan-Africanist. I'm not a Pan-Africanist. Okay? And a lot of South Africans agree with me. That, no. Nah. No. Nah. No. No. Let's stop it now. Okay? Thank you. See you guys. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.